Hello and welcome back. I'm Nick and I help run Camp Zufari here at the Houston Zoo. We're excited to bring the zoo to you this summer with Camp Zufari TV. Now, if you had an animal superpower, what would it be? Would you want to soar like an eagle? Or maybe be at home prowling around in the dark like our tiger, Barani? Do you like to swim? Would you want flippers like a sea lion or gills like a shark? What about the strength of an elephant to knock down trees or the speed of a cheetah? Maybe it's the ability to climb like our Siamangs and Gibbons without fear of falling. If I had an animal superpower, I'd want gills. I love to swim and exploring the beach underwater would be so much fun. Whatever animal superpower you choose, it's a safe bet that there's an animal here at the zoo that already has that ability. In fact, most of the superheroes we all know borrowed their powers straight from the animal kingdom. Today, let's explore those animal superpowers and the heroes that draw inspiration from them. Sea lions are like a variety of superheroes. In water, their fur, shape, and powerful muscles allow them to swim quickly through the water. For short distances, they can reach speeds of 25 miles per hour, the same speed as a car driving through a neighborhood. With this speed, they can also leap out of the water up to 10 feet off the surface of the water, which helps them play and to avoid predators. Spending time in the water is a piece of cake for a sea lion. Sea lions are also very smart and use a lot of different sounds to communicate or share information. They can bark, grunt, or growl. These sounds all mean different things. An adult male sea lion may bark to defend their territory or space. Growls can be used as warnings to other sea lions to stay away or to scare off threats. Mother sea lions are so smart, they can identify the call of their sea lion pup when they are all grouped together on the beach. All of this communication is similar to our favorite water-based superheroes sharing information and asking for help from the sea creatures they encounter on their adventures. On land, sea lions act more like a super strong superhero. Rotating their shoulders and hips, sea lions can carry themselves quickly on land. For short distances, they can run and sprint faster than a person. This takes tremendous strength as they can weigh up to 800 pounds. They also have great eyesight. This is a useful ability on land or at sea, both for finding food and staying safe. Meet Jonah. He's our 23-year-old male sea lion, and while he's a big boy weighing in at around 550 pounds this summer, he's super fast in the water. In the wild, he could use that speed to catch fish. Here at the Houston Zoo, some of his favorite fish are capelin and herring. Since sea lions live in the water, it's important to keep our oceans clean. And the sea lion keepers at the Houston Zoo are dedicated to helping keep our local waters as clean as possible. Each month since 2014, the sea lion team manages a jetty cleanup at Surfside Beach, Texas. With the help of other staff members and volunteers, our team has collected approximately 583 pounds of fishing line or monofilament, 
2,414 pounds of recyclables and 4,772 pounds of trash. The combined weight of all this material is almost as heavy as a full-grown hippopotamus. You can be a superhero for marine life too. Next time you visit the beach, be sure to take your trash with you when you leave. You can also be a superhero for marine animals every day. Just by using a reusable water bottle, you're keeping plastic out of the oceans. Time for another quiz. More quizzes to come. Gibbons have incredible arm strength. For a gibbon, it takes very little effort to hold themselves up when hanging from one hand. When they are swinging and moving through the treetops, they can leap almost 25 feet through the air with just the power of their shoulders. That is more than the height of a full-grown giraffe or the length of a city bus. Gibbons also have arms that are longer than their bodies. This is great for hanging around in the trees, but it means that when they walk on the ground, they must hold their arms up so that their fingers don't drag in the sand. Also, gibbons can communicate with elaborate songs. Gibbons can make a variety of sounds to share where they are, what they see, and if there are any threats nearby. The male and female song is different from each other. Not only can they share a lot of information, but they can share it across long distances too. Gibbons can be so loud that you can hear them no matter where you are standing in the zoo. Here are brothers Max and Murray. These two white cheek gibbons show off their incredible arm strength as they brachiate through the treetops in their habitat in the zoo's Wortham world of primates. Brachiate is a big word for using their arms to swing. When you swing from the monkey bars, you're brachiating too. Siamangs are another type of gibbon, and they're also the largest. They use their long, strong arms to brachiate through the treetops. The most distinguishing characteristic of Siamangs is the enlarged throat sac that can be almost as big as their head. These throat sacs are used as a sound box to amplify their loud vocalizations. The male and female partners sing with each other and the male often swings through the trees during the song. Often you can hear our pair of Siamangs Jambi and Barani singing a duet in the mornings. <laughs> showing off their impressive vocal skills, they can be seen lounging around their exhibit, either on the ground or in the trees. Let's check your animal knowledge.
The mamba is a snake that lives in Africa. The superpower of a mamba, both black and green, is not their speed, even though they're fast. They have a more impressive superpower. They have the ability to create venom. This venom, kept in special glands inside their head, is connected through two hollow fangs. When a mamba bites down on its prey or defends itself with a strike against a predator, the venom is injected. This is the difference between venom and a poison. Venom must be injected, while a poison can be absorbed through touch, like poison ivy. The venom of a mamba works very quickly in its prey's nervous system. It works to stop its prey from breathing. If bitten, prey and predators both may give up very quickly. The black mamba has another trick it uses to stay safe. It takes a lot of energy and effort for the mamba to make its venom, so it doesn't want to use it if it doesn't have to. To stay safe from predators, the black mamba will first use its feet to escape a threat. If that doesn't work, it will open its mouth very wide and show the inside of its mouth. The inside of a black mamba mouth is not pink like the inside of ours. Instead, it's a deep, dark black color. This is how the black mamba got its name. Not from the color of its scales, which are actually tan or olive green, but from inside its black mouth. This black skin can startle or scare away predators, so the mamba doesn't need to use any venom. This warning system is the same as every superhero costume. A superhero's costume announces to everyone that they have powers and it would be a bad idea to mess with them. While it's very unlikely that you'll run into a black mamba here in Texas, the Lone Star State is home to lots of different types of snakes. So what should you do if you see a snake near your home or in your neighborhood? Just stop, back away, and then go tell an adult. Snakes have a very important job. They eat rats and mice. Snakes just need a little space to do their job, like our good friend the rat snake from last week. Remember, if you see a snake, just stop, back away, and then go tell an adult. Welcome back. Let's check your animal knowledge. Keep watching for more quizzes. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready. We're ready, are you? Anyone who helps save wildlife is an animal superhero. And while superheroes come in many shapes and sizes, they all have one thing in common, their costumes. Today, I decided to recycle some cardboard and string to make my gauntlets. For my mask and cape, it's old fabric. What kind of superhero costume can you create? Once you have your costume, how will you use your superpowers to help? Will you share your knowledge with others? Will you team up with your family and friends as sidekicks to make your neighborhood a safer place for wildlife? Will you use your powers to create shelters for animals, like this tote abode? A tote abode is any shelter that provides shade and protection from predators for frogs and amphibians. To make mine, I started with an old soup can 
cut an opening and started to attach shells to it. Later I'll finish it by decorating it with markers and paint and maybe some extra shells if I find any. We would love to see all of you superheroes in action. Share a story or some photos with us on social media on how you're helping save wildlife. For animals! Some superheroes can make themselves invisible. Clouded leopards can do this with their spots. They have large spots that are shaped like clouds that work to help them camouflage in the treetops where they spend most of their time. Superheroes are also known to be able to scale tall buildings and leap from rooftops. For clouded leopards with their long tails and sharp claws, they are perfect treetop acrobats. As they move through spots of light and shadow, their cloud-shaped patterns allow them to almost disappear from view when they stand still. Clouded leopards have sharp claws and specially designed ankles. They can rotate their ankles more than other cat species. This means that unlike the larger cats, they can not only climb up trees, but they can climb down trees, hang upside down, and move around much more easily and with more stealth or secrecy than other cats. This allows them a better chance to catch food like birds and small monkeys. In order to spy their prey, clouded leopards also have excellent binocular vision. This super sight is crucial for judging distances as they climb and pounce on prey. Their pupils, the black center of their eyes, are also different from any other cat's pupils. They never get fully round like big cats, yet they never shrink to vertical slits like small cats. Instead, they stay in an oblong shape. We have four clouded leopards, and the two pairs both work together just like a superhero and their sidekick. Clouded leopards usually do not like other cats in their space. However, when a male and a female clouded leopard are paired together when they're around one year old, they are more likely to get along well and make great parents. Our older two had cubs late last year. In the wee hours of November 12th, Suxin gave birth to two tiny cubs, Nova and Luna. Now that they're getting bigger, the duo explores their habitat and tests out all of their climbing superpowers. Let's check your animal knowledge.
The bleeding heart dove is named for the red spot that they have on their chest. The red spot, instead of camouflaging like the stripes of a tiger or the spots of a leopard, helps this dove stand out. While that makes it easier for a predator to spot or see the dove, they can quickly fly to get away. The spot is used by males to attract a mate or a partner. When a male dove sees a female dove he likes, he will puff up his chest, making the spot larger. He will then chase her on the ground and call out to her, hoping that she notices him. When the bleeding heart dove finds a partner, both parents help with building a nest, keeping the egg warm, and raising the chick. It doesn't take much time for all of this to happen though. The egg is kept warm in the nest for 15 days when the chick is hatched. A short 15 days later, the chick is ready to try to fly and can then go off on its own. But during the 15 days in the nest, the daddy dove helps feed the babies with something called crop milk. It comes from a pouch near the adult's throat. These birds play a big role in helping keep the soil from eroding in their native habitat in the islands of Luzon and Polio in the Philippines. Since they eat lots of seeds and berries, when the seeds pass through their digestive system and falls to the ground, new plants can take root, keeping the forest growing. I think that's a really amazing superhero trait. Time for another quiz. Wow, who knew so many animals could give superheroes a run for their money? Before we go, I wanted to take the time to introduce you to one of my friends. This is Millie, the three-banded armadillo from South America. And just like the nine-banded armadillos we have here in Texas, Millie wears her armor on her back. Her body is covered in osteoderms, our bony plates, that are then covered in keratin, which make up these plates. Keratin is the same thing that's in our hair and fingernails, and on Porcupine Ernie's quills. If you touch your fingernails, that's the exact same feeling as touching the back of Millie's plates. These plates are her armor, keeping her safe from predators. If she feels scared, she'll curl up into a ball to protect her soft belly. Three-banded armadillos are one of the only species of armadillo that can curl all the way into a ball using their tail and their faceplate as added armor. With only three bands, Millie's able to do something that other armadillos can't, and that's curl all the way up into a ball. This defensive posture helps keep her safe from predators, and it helps us tell her apart from other armadillos. Part of a three-banded armadillo's superhero disguise is this faceplate. Just like our fingerprints, no two are alike, so the pattern of plates on Millie's head is unique to just her. Another one of her superpowers is in the way she walks. Let's take a look. If you look closely at her feet, you'll see that she has these large claws, perfect for digging. Because the length of those claws and the shape of her feet Millie's always walking around on her tiptoes. 
walking this way keeps her legs strong and ready to help her dig into the toughest termite mounds or to track down some of her favorites like the mealworms. To follow along next week, join us exclusively on the zoo's website and social media pages. Bye! Hi, I'm Lee Emke, the President and CEO of the Houston Zoo. After more than two months of being closed, we are ready and excited to welcome you back to reconnect with the animals you know and love. To ensure the health and safety of you, your family, and our animals, here are a few of the modifications you can expect during your next visit. The Houston Zoo is now accepting advanced reservations online only for all visitors and zoo members at HoustonZoo.org for the health and safety of our guests, staff, and animals, and to ensure adequate social distancing, a limited number of timed tickets will be available each day and only available online at HoustonZoo.org. Pick the day and time you'd like to visit, and you will receive an electronic ticket that can be scanned by one of our team members when you arrive. Once inside, guests will follow a modified one-way path through the zoo to see many of their favorite animals in outdoor wildlife habitats, including elephants, rhinos, gorillas, lions, and many more. Guests will not have access to indoor animal exhibits or high-touch areas of the zoo. Some sit-down restaurants are open at limited capacity, and food and beverages are available for purchase at multiple locations, all food and beverage locations are credit card only. All zoo staff are required to wear masks while working. And in accordance with new Harris County orders, all guests 10 years and older are required to wear masks. Hand sanitizer stations are positioned at the entrance and exit and along the path, including restrooms and food locations. Zoo staff will disinfect all high-touch surfaces, including vending machines, tables, chairs, and more. For more detailed information, and to reserve your ticket, visit HoustonZoo.org.